All right, how's it going? I'm that ginger photographer. A bit of a different one today, totally different scenario for me. I've got a photo shoot. I've got a friend who's a percussionist and he's got the chance to go and play in Ibiza for the summer season. He needs some footage and some photos to be able to send over at the venue. Uh, and I'm gonna be capturing that for him this morning. It's Sunday morning, about nine o'clock. And I've got about 20 minutes to get everything packed up in the car and get it across to the venue. Uh, probably shouldn't be making this video in all honesty. I'm frantically charging everything because last night was Saturday night and I thought, shall I go out to the studio and charge everything or should I drink these beers and things aren't charged? So I've got another friend who I've recently shot in their new venue. He's took on a big unit, big industrial unit. He's done it out pretty cool. So I reached out and I asked if we could use his venue. So that's where we're gonna be shooting today. I just don't know what to take. I've got lights that I'm frantically packing. I've got my gimbal. Um, I'm a bit out of my depth in all honesty because I've never really shot like this. Fingers crossed it goes well. If it doesn't, I just won't release this video. So let's go there. So when we very first got there, it was just a case of finding a nice area to set up. I knew I wanted some wide shots and I knew I wanted some nice close-up shots as well. So we picked a nice corner, cleared all the equipment out of it and just got set up there. At first, I'd set up the big softbox on my video light and the light was just a little bit too soft. I didn't like it, I know that makes sense, but I just didn't like it and I didn't like where I'd set it up either. So I moved it to another angle and it worked really well just with the bare bulb. I'd read that the further away that the light source is from your subject, then the harsher the shadows would be. And I wanted really harsh shadows for this shoot. Some might say it mimics that Ibiza look. No one says that, just me. I wanted a bit of ambience in the background as well. I wanted a bit of light in the background so that it wasn't just a dark brick wall behind Toby. So I bought these sexy colored lights off Amazon and those worked really well. And I ended up just choosing two colors that complemented each other. After that, it was just a case of finding the right camera angles. As massive as my muscles are, I couldn't carry two gimbals. So I had one static on a tripod and I had one camera on the gimbal as well. So this is the first angle that we chose. Let's go! Look how excited I was, turned out to be shit. I don't think that angle worked well at all. It was too close in on the drums. It didn't show enough of Toby. And also it didn't even show my sexy lights in the background. So it definitely needed moving. So I moved that static camera around to a more central position. I had it pointed at Toby a little bit wider. So there was more of him in the shot and it got a lot more range of the drums in there as well. Next up was deciding where I was gonna be for the gimbal shots. I know I wanted some movement in there, but I also know I wanted some nice wide shots and I wanted some nice close ups as well. Some nice tight crops of Toby playing the drums. I also was very conscious that I didn't want my gimbal shots to be too close to the static camera shots because I think them angles would have been too similar and I think it had been confusing cutting from one to the other. It almost looked like you were cutting to the same clip. So I made sure when I was using the gimbal I was about one meter to two meters away from my static camera so you could see a real clear difference between the two angles and between the two shots when I was cutting to them. And because this show reel all had to be done in one take as well, I was really conscious that I didn't want too much movement in the video. So with the gimbal, I was still for a lot of that footage as well, just holding the gimbal. And when I did use a bit of movement, it was very slow, smooth movement, rather than just moving it around a lot for the sake of moving it. After that, it was just a case of doing a few takes, seeing which one was the best and seeing which one we were gonna use. I also found out it's really important not to forget to press record. Sorry, mate. It was me, that. So here's the 50 second clip that we actually got on the day, edited together. I can't play the backing track with it because of copyright, so this is just the drums, but still pretty good.
after we were done with the filming, it was time to get some photos as well. I wanted to utilize those colored lights I had in the background because I wanted to try and match the feel from the video to go with the feel from the photos. I needed a bit of a light source to light up Toby with those colored lights behind him, but I think my flashes that I had with me might have been too overpowering. Toby might have been a little bit too bright, or the colored lights in the background might not have been as visible. And because he already had the video light set up, I just utilized that instead. And that also meant that the look I was getting in the photos exactly matched the look that I was getting from the video because it was completely the same setup. For these images where it looks like Toby's actually playing the drums, I used my science brain and I told him to play it really slowly because I didn't want too much motion blur from the drumsticks. Again, it was just a case of getting some wide shots, utilizing the environment and getting some nice tight close portraits as well. Overall, I'm really happy with what we got. I know I was outside of my comfort zone, but I think it's good to be outside your comfort zone sometimes. It's good to try new things. That's how you grow and that's how you learn. So 10 out of 10 would do again. I'll see you in the next one. Love you, bye.